So let's dive into Array Prototype Every. Array Every is a method that exists on our Array Prototype, and it was introduced in ECMAScript version 5 and is currently supported in all modern browsers. So what does Array Every do? Array Every tells us whether every single element inside of our array passes a particular test, and that test is up to us. If every element passes, then Array Every, once it's finished the loop, will then return us a value of true. If one of these elements happens to fail, then Every will return false. It's actually quite an easy one to remember. Does every item in my array do something I want? That's all you need to do to think about it. If, for example, every is iterating our loop and our fries, for example, cause every to trigger a false result, instead of continuing looping our data structures, it will in fact short circuit and give us a nice performance boost by not just pointlessly carrying on because we have that single false result. We don't technically need it. So underneath our items, let's have a quick look at the syntax for array every. Here we can see the function definition. We have that callback function, which again gives us the value, the index, the array, and we can optionally change the this argument. And finally, you can see that our function returns us a Boolean. That's all you're going to get back from array every. So inside of our function, we get the value, we get the index and the array. We would then have to execute some code inside the body of our function. We can alternatively change the this argument, but remember you'll need to use a proper function instead of an arrow function if you do need to change the this argument, which isn't that common, but I'm just showing you the syntax here. And finally, the most important piece is our return value that we can do something with. Now, because array every returns us a Boolean value, its result is then commonly used in things such as if statements where we can conditionally go and do something based on our array return value. So with the syntax out of the way, I want to just show you a nice example of how to use or think about array every on a very simple case. So here we're going to create a new array. We're going to say true, true, and false. We can then say every and pass in the word of Boolean with a capital B. This is a built-in JavaScript object, which is a function which will pass each item to a Boolean. What's really happening is something like this, where we would call our Boolean function and pass in X. However, we can just supply Boolean because it's a function as the callback. Similarly, if you were going to have some function above, we could then pass in my callback here and then access X inside of here. So that's essentially what's happening with Boolean. And it's a very useful tool to quickly see if all values in our array are truthy. Now, as I mentioned, we have this return value. So we can say, is every value true? And then underneath, we can go ahead, log out the console. So over on the right in our console, we have false because we have one false value. If we were to change this across to true, every single item in our array results to true when our Boolean returns the value. Therefore, every just simply gives us a true value. And that's a really nice and easy way that you can think about this. Now, to give you more of a realistic example, what we're going to do is add a new property to our data structures. We're going to call it the stock property and we're going to have true, true, and we'll make this one false just to keep things interesting. So it might be that we have stock on a particular product. We need to know that the item is in stock before somebody can then purchase it. So this would be our false flag where we might want to then show the user a message that says, hey, our drink happens to be out of stock. Maybe you should order something else. So what we can do with array every, we can say constant is in stock and items dot every, we can ask for that item and we can just simply return item dot stock. Now this is more of a simplified example, but you can compare using various operators. You could check numbers, you can check strings, whatever you want. I'm keeping things nice and simple with just straight up Boolean values. So now what we could say is if is in stock and we'll invert this momentarily, we could say console log 
and we could say, sorry, the item is out of stock. And what we could do is, like I said, we can invert this. So if it's not in stock, we'll show this message. However, we could be a bit more useful for the user and then go and find that item which wasn't in stock. For this, we could use items.find. We could pass in item and we can say, pass me back every item that is in stock. However, because it's not in stock, we want to invert this one as well. Now this will then return us in the console, sorry, object object is out of stock. So what we actually need to do is access the name property. We can hit save and you can see, sorry, big slurp is out of stock. If we were to change this one to true, hit save, you can see that we have no message logged out in the console. However, we could go and change another item and make it out of stock. And now our fries are now out of stock. So using array every is a really nice tool that we can conditionally provide some logic. In my case, I'm just telling the user that sorry that something is out of stock. And our example here is simple, but it's real enough. You can see how we've used this is in stock variable as part of our conditional statement where it's most commonly used. So now's the piece in the video where I want to show you how to use array every without actually using it directly. This will then help us uncover by using a for loop, how we can think about how array every works before the new API was introduced. So at the moment we are missing our is in stock variable. So what we'll do is set this to true and then inside our loop, if any items are out of stock, we'll then set is in stock to false. So we'll go for let i equals zero. i is then less than our items dot length. We can then go ahead and increment our value of i. We can create a constant which grabs us the items variable. And all we need to do is supply some conditional logic inside, which is exactly really what we're doing here. Now the difference is here we're checking if every single item is in fact in stock. And it's up to us to find a false result and then change this accordingly. So what we're going to do is actually invert it and say if the item is not in stock, we're then going to change our is in stock then to false. It would also be a great practice to just simply break the loop at this point in time. So let's go ahead and hit save and you can see that everything is working absolutely as we'd intend. We could go ahead and change this back to true. We can see everything updates in the console and finally change our drink back to being out of stock. And there we have successfully completed our mission of learning array prototype every. It goes very nicely in hand with array sum. They're essentially opposites of each other. So now we've looked through the traditional way, we can revert our code back to the more declarative, the more modern and declarative way of achieving our conditional logic. And I've just introduced you to array find. If you haven't seen this before, we're gonna go and explore it in the next video. So I'll see you there.